everybody, it's George Whittem reporting for Whittem's World. All right, well, Thanksgiving has passed us, and it's time to get back into the swing, at least for a few more weeks until I leave town again. So I have a lot in the queue that I'm going to pack in before I head out of town for the holidays. So don't worry, there'll be plenty to watch. This week's question comes in from Michael McCormick, and he says, Not sure if you've covered this in your weekly vlogs, but hope you can provide me with your professional input and advice on these two issues I'm having. Note, if you're looking for content that I've already covered, you want to see if I've already covered it, just type in Widom's World in the YouTube search and type in the topic, Whisper Room, Acoustics, whatever. That's a really quick way to find out if I've already covered the topic. Anyway, I recently purchased a single wall three and a half by three and a half whisper room with optional ventilation. I got it cheap on Craigslist and I'm very disappointed with the sound as I'm hearing an echoey boxy sound. I'm using a blue spark mic and I have adjusted the mic axis and positioning, but I've not seen much of a difference. In addition to the sound issue, I'm also finding that my recordings are overly sibilant and full of mouth noise. This was occurring before and after the whisper room. I have read that the Shure SM7B would reduce my sibilance issue, but how do I address the echo in my whisper room? Whisper room has a great reputation, but I'm not very impressed. Thank you so much for your weekly vlogs and have a great Thanksgiving. I did. Thanks, Mike. Well, you are discovering the hard way that any small box, no matter what brand name is on that box, if you shove yourself and a microphone inside said box, it's going to sound lousy. Okay? There's just no two ways about it. These are the rules of acoustics. When you have a very small space, like a whisper room, like like this three and a half by three and a half square foot floor plan, you're really going to have trouble, especially a square. A space that has two equal length walls is an, an additional issue. If you've got a rectangular space, the advantage of a rectangular space, even when it's very small, is the standing waves, which are the resonance of the sound that's bouncing back and forth between those two perfectly parallel perpendicular walls, that sound resonates at a certain frequency based on the length of that wall. So if you've got a rectangle, you at least have more than one frequency to kind of break things up a little bit. So you've got one frequency in one dimension, another in the other dimension. When you've got two sets of walls that are equal in length, both directions resonate the same frequency. So you get a very prominent ringing or boxy or hollow effect. You might call it echo, but it's really more of a a resonance that's going to occur. It's a heck of a lot like blowing air across a Coke bottle, a soda bottle. You've done this experiment, I'm sure, a hundred times. When you blow air across the bottle, the bottle rings and resonates. They call it a Helmholtz resonator. While it's not exactly the same thing with a whisper room, it's still going to resonate at a certain natural frequency. That's the natural resonance of that space based on its volume, how much air is inside that space. And so these small spaces resonate very badly. The thing is, when you get a whisper room, they're nice enough to throw in a few sheets of Auralex acoustical foam. Maybe you got that with yours, buying it used. Maybe you didn't get any. I don't know. But even with the base amount of acoustic foam, which is about a two-inch thick layer that they give you, they give you like four panels, you just hang them on the wall. That booth is a real acoustical mess. So you have to deal with it by using what are called base traps. Base traps are either made out of foam or other more dense materials that are attached to the walls and sometimes wall to the ceiling, that can control and absorb lower frequency sound. The acoustic foam that you usually get, that two-inch thick foam, can only really absorb much down to about 500 hertz, as I'll show you in this graph here. Below 500 hertz, it does almost nothing to absorb your sound. And guess what? That's a lot of where your voice's natural resonance is. It's in that frequency range. So by using bass trapping, we're now able to start absorbing and controlling things below 500 hertz. And if you're using an acoustical treatment package from Auralex, or even if you're not, if you're using foam acoustic treatment, I highly recommend the Auralex Leonard Bass Traps, L-E-N-R-D. The bass traps will control that 500 to 100 hertz range that is so critical. 
And that is really where the meat of the voice is, especially for men. Once you put four or if you've got the space to spare up to eight of those into that space, four in the corner top, four in the corner bottom, or four around the around the middle of the room, you're going to be in much better shape. You're going to have a hard time fitting them in around where the door is because they'll overlap the door. So you're going to have to get creative on how you place these. But you really can't overdo it with base trapping. It's very hard to overdo it. If you were to overdo your base trapping in a small room that size, you would actually not be able to fit inside the booth. <laughs> the base traps would take up the entire volume of the room. So don't worry, you're not going to overdo it. So I would start with four. More than likely, you'll need to squeeze into that booth up to eight base traps to get rid of that low-end resonance in that room and get it sounding good again. You do that, it's going to sound fantastic. As for your mic sibilance issues, that's a whole different problem. It's not related to the acoustics. As you said, it was there before you had the Whisper Room. And that has something to do with that particular mic. A lot of the less expensive um, cardioid condenser studio microphones that are available, many of them made overseas in China, tend to be very bright mics and also very sensitive to sibilance. And this mic would not be an exception. So you're going to have to be very clever about how you place this mic possibly rotating the microphone off axis. You know, like for example, take my mic here. <clears throat> you might find you want to rotate the mic so that you're speaking more across the mic or into the side of the mic. That will help attenuate high frequencies. So that might be a plan that you can try to adjust for using the mic that you already have. But another solution is going to be using um, some post-processing, some EQ, things like that. Another solution is going to be working with a voice coach to train that sibilance out of your voice, which is something you can do because experienced voice actors do not really have sibilance problems because they've learned how to reduce the sibilance. So it's really another issue to, to work on. The SM7B, yeah, it may reduce the sibilance, but it's going to cause other issues because it's extremely low output microphone, not very sensitive at all. So yeah, it will reduce the sibilance maybe a little bit but it's still going to cause other issues because of its extremely low sensitivity. So I'm not a big fan of using dynamic microphones for that reason. Anyway, thanks for writing in. I really appreciate it. I hope these tips were going to help you get your booth tuned up. If you really want to have me do it right with you and really go through the process, I do offer a booth tuning service. Head over to vostudiotech.com, drop down the services menu, and you'll see it in there, booth tuning service. And we will absolutely guarantee that when we're done with that studio, it's going to sound professional. No question about it. Thanks again for watching. VOStudioTech.com is the place to go for all tech-supported needs. And if you've got just general questions about your voiceover studio, things that you want to have answered on Widom's World, send them into Widom's World at EdgeStudio.com. And always 212-868-EDGE for anything having to do with Edge. Thanks again for watching. A lot more in the queue, microphone tests, an eight mic shootout. I've got the portable uh, vocal booth to go that I'm gonna be reviewing up here soon. I've got a new USB microphone that you don't wanna miss, something totally unique. All this stuff's coming up and I'm gonna have it all in the queue before the end of the year. That's my pledge to you. <laughs> all right, have a great one. I'll see you next time on Wood in the World.